Inflation remains flat. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because we're going to talk about the latest CPI data that has come out just today, where it's pretty much remained flat or it's increased 0.6%, not that much. Now, I hear you asking, but Florian, I'm seeing price rises. I'm getting quotes for construction jobs and everything's going up. I went and had to pay more money for these goods or for this petrol. It's all lies. No one believes the ABS. Well, let's have a look at that and then we'll discuss a few reasons why we may be seeing some price rises in certain things. Because you've got to remember, they take a long-term view. And even if you don't trust the ABS figures, well, guys, they're going to be used to make policy decisions. This is the data. So let's let's have a look. This is the media release from the uh, ABS. The consumer price index rose 0.6% in the March 2021 quarter, according to the latest data from the ABS. Head of price statistics, uh, Michelle Marquard, said higher fuel prices, well, we're seeing that, compared with the low prices seen in 2020, accounted for much of the rise in the March quarter of CPI. Okay, so they're picking up on the petrol. The most significant... Oh, and that's just an interesting thing. If people... If anyone argues with regards to fuel price... You know, subsidies to the fossil fuel industry, it's not really a subsidy. They're exempt from paying the fuel excises and certain ta on petrol because their vehicles don't drive on the road. <laughs> so, which, which makes complete sense, doesn't it? So they're just exempt from a tax. It's not really a subsidy to the industry. But don't, don't let that get in the way of building a good narrative, hey? Anyway, back to this. Because I just topped up on the tank. Well, honestly, I didn't. I only put a little bit in, so Rachel would have to spend more. That doesn't even make any difference to our finances, but still I do it. The most significant rise in the March quarter was automotive fuel at 8.7%, medical and hospital services at 1.5%, and pharmaceutical products at 53 due to the resetting of the Medicare and Pharmacies Benefit Scheme safety net. A rise in prices for accessories of 7.3% reflected higher consumer confidence and demand for discretionary items such as jewellery allowing jewelers to pass through elevated input costs. And, well, we'll look at some of these input costs relative to the construction sector. Jewelry, it's, it's gone up and so the metals are going up. So there you go, guys. <laughs> With, you know, take your precious metals down to the jeweler and <laughs> flip it there. Might get a better rate than cashies. The introduction, continuation, and conclusion of a number of government schemes remained a factor in the March quarter, seen in price falls for new dwellings. What? Okay. And tertiary education, down 7.1. Ms. Marquard said the fall in new dwelling prices was due to the impact of the federal government's home builder grant and similar grants by the West Australian and Tasmanian state government. Okay, why then? Uh, if, is, why am I anecdotally hearing from everyone that quotes are going up? And we'll look at construction costs from, uh, uh, <laughs> in a moment, from the uh, Australian Building Association, uh, HIA, uh, the PCI, that prices are going up. Sale prices are going up, but here apparently not. So we're getting two, two conflicting data data points. Well, maybe one's a bit newer. Without the, off, without the offset from these grants. Okay, so they're taking the grants off. The price of new dwellings would have risen. But see, the thing is with the grants, with the government money, on an individual level, it may be a good deal. But remember, the government's going in 1.3 trillion in debt. So, you know, we're going to pay it back later. Reflecting increases in material and labor prices in response to strong demand. The federal government's job-ready graduates package resulted in a fall in tertiary education fees this quarter, while on average the costs for commencing students increased. Those for continuing students fell mainly due to the grandfathering arrangements included in the package. And you have to understand, when we're talking about inflation, there's the traditional definition of just inflating, increasing the money supply. Then there's the, the modern argument where it's to do focusing mainly on price increases. And then you can have those price increases are due to, well, demand or supply issues or a combination of both. And here we have, we'll talk about it, demand is shooting up because of the government stimulus. 
but they're not counting that stimulus uh, relative to pr the prices. But then also we've got supply issues manifesting too. We'll look at the shipping rates. Guys, you'll be shocked at how much it's gone up if you haven't been following. The federal government, uh, we looked at that. Annual inflation for the March 2021 quarter increased to 1.1% following a rise of 0.9% in the December quarter. Price rises in tobacco and furnishing were partially offset by falls in rents, automotive fuels, and utilities. Well, we are seeing the rents going down, everyone. The trimmed mean, a measure of underlying inflation, rose by 1.1%, which is the lowest annual movement on record. This followed a rise of 1.2% in the December 2020 quarter. And here we have the CPI quarterly and annual movements. There's the annual in the blue, solid blue line and the quarterly. So it's it's not going up. And once again, the RBA have missed their target. So let's <clears throat> jump here and have a look at this latest release. And I'll just make sure you can see it all on the screen. So what do we have here? What's new this quarter? Uh, main features. So there you go. We had, well, CPI crash. And a lot of this back last year was because of the free childcare. Remember the free childcare they were giving out to everyone? And that's that's how they uh, they calculated that as decreasing CPI. And here we have it, so slowly going up. Remember, the RBA has a target. The Reserve Bank has a target for inflation. They want to have inflation at a certain level, which they consider kind of healthy to keep the economy moving. Okay. Because the risk, what they're afraid of, is in a deflatory environment where things get cheaper, you won't spend your money. You'll hoard it because it, it has more value. And, uh, well, there's an example, an, exa an unintended example of that happening in a way, in a way. In Victoria, you can get a subsidy for your solar panels. That subsidy is equal to about half the cost of the solar panels. Every month there's, you know, you can apply for it. So the spots you can imagine go pretty quick. What do you think people do if they just happen to miss out on that subsidy? Do you think they will say, oh, well, I'll just pay the full price. I, I won't get the half price. Too bad. Better luck next time. Well, no, they don't because they wait. They wait another month. So one month of waiting could potentially mean a 50% saving on their panels. So that mon their money will have more purchasing power for panels in this particular instance in a month's time if they happen to win this lotto, if they get in real quick. So that's actually capped that industry in Victoria. It's probably causing more harm than it is. Good. It's a problem when the government intervenes and subsidizes things, when it doesn't let the market make up its mind. It's the same type of thing if you have a deflatory environment. Would you rush out and spend all your money right away or would you hoard it and really limit what you're going to spend? Same thing is with the, the crypto aficionados, people who really love Bitcoin. Have you ever actually tried to do a business transaction with someone? I remember I was doing some plans for a guy. I offered him a discount if he paid me in Bitcoin. It was all too hard. He couldn't figure out. He just wanted to hold on to the more valuable money, or as we both perceive the more valuable money. So let's keep going. And here's the weighted average of the eight capital cities. So <clears throat> uh, all CPI will go December to March is up 0.6. Food and non-alcoholic beverages up 0.4. Alcohol 0.3. Clothing and footwear. 0.5 housing 0.1 remember this they've adjusted it for all the freebies you get even though the freebies will be uh, pushing up the costs uh, furnishings household equipment and services health 2% transport 3.2 communication 0.5 rec and culture down 0.2 education up 0.4 insurance and financial services up 0.1 and the analytical services you've got there so what or the analytical series so here's the main contributors to it. And you can see transport has been the biggest one. That's the petrol right there that's coming through. And I pretty much saw that today when I filled up. So here's the capital city comparison. And the winner is, well, winner is uh, Darwin at 2.6%. And then we have Perth and then all the rest. Where's Brizzy? Where are we? We're at 0.6. We like Adelaide, Sydney, and Melbourne. Melbourne's doing the best. Melbourne wins. And here's by L percentages. And the city highlights. What do we have? Food. Perth is the highest. Well, yeah, we're going to see that. And where's the worst place to get your alcohol? Melbourne. It's flat in Sydney. It's gone down in Hobart. So there we go, guys. We all have to move to Hobart to get our beers. So if we're seeing that, the question is, 
why are construction costs and things like this going up, or at least anecdotally, or well, if not anecdotally, what I'm seeing from uh, this data, the, the PCI? Why is it one of the aspects of it from AI group showing construction costs going up? And we see here, um, 12 month average, you know, selling price is up. Um, input prices have pushed up, you know, from the 12 month average. So there's been a bit, bit of a change. And those input prices are, are manifesting. There we go here. And selling prices as well are going up. But according to the ABS, we're not seeing it because they're arguing that the free grants kind of offset this. So, well, I mean, the free grants, which people get, which uh, you're going to pretty much pay back in tax anyway, in GST, just in the stuff you buy. So it's just designed to stimulate. And in that regards, it's working really well, everyone. It is working very well. So one of the issues is shipping costs. Shipping costs have just skyrocketed. And this has been going on for some time. This is just a snapshot from a live shipping website and just how much shipping happens around the world. The whole idea of like the Eurozone being this, this block to allow for all this trade, a lot of that went out the window because just modern shipping has just expanded. It's gotten so much larger and so efficient. You can ship stuff around the world where you could for pretty cheap, but it's gotten a bit more expensive. And that's going to start manifesting a lot of the imported goods and that'll happen. That will, well... We've got a bit of a glut with containers and we'll see that just getting access to them and that's going to manifest in the in the goods in some of these buildings that are built and other things here's the the uh, freitos baltic index the fbx and it's showing you on the 23rd of april it was at 4370 i'll change it to a pen 72 guys that's pretty high 4372 look at that okay look at what it was back in 1920 and then Boom, it's skyrocketed. So freight costs are really high compared to where they used to be. And a lot of the stuff is imported. This is the the year-on-year -year pricing trends. I mean, there you go. There's last year. There's this year. Look at that. <coughs> what what else can we say, guys? It's it's evident there. And this okay, this is going from China to uh, from East Asia to Northwest America to the to the um, west coast and that's it's gone up to four thousand eight hundred and thirty one dollars and this is for a standard like like 20 foot container that that's uh, you know what it's measured on and you know obviously different containers will vary in size and you might you might see this and think oh boy maybe there's a way to make money buying containers and renting them out because you'll see how cheap they are or how in demand they are be careful there's a lot of cons that that offer that there's a lot of scams going around the place for that. Just watch for that, guys. Watch for that. I was looking for it. I thought that seems like a good idea. And of course, you know, people, if it seems like a good idea, people are going to try and scam it. So there you look at that climb, everyone, just in this year. We can see as well. This is <clears throat> from going back. Okay, going back. Now, to get there, you're paying four thousand eight hundred and thirty one dollars to go back it's it's gone up it's eight hundred and seventy one so it's it's gotten more expensive but it's still a fraction of what it is to get there it used to, it's double where it was it used to be 400 bucks round about now it's over 800 and to think of what you can get in a container like that how much you could store in one that, to travel from one side of the world to another you know that that's compared to times in the past that's really cheap but it's really cheap, but it's gotten expensive. Now, have a look at this. This is the highest. Going from, from East Asia to Northern Europe, 7,779 bucks, everyone. Look at that. And I'm sure the Suez Canal uh, disaster isn't going to help that that much. That'll even, that will cause a backlog, everyone. We've seen that just with the size of some of these container ships, there's only certain ports that can handle them. I mean, look at that. So, another thing is also material costs, guys. And we're seeing lumber. I, I updated this chart. The last time I had it in the slide, it was at $1,100. These are the Chicago lumber futures. They're now at $1,400. Chicago lumber futures skyrocketed 
above the 1,400 per thousand boards for the first time on record, as sawmills strive to keep pace with demand ahead of the peak spring construction season. This is this is there's two reasons for this. One is the sawmills just well they can't get the timber, and they haven't they haven't got the capacity because demand has far outstripped any of their anything they anticipated, and because demand is just skyrocketing, so supply can't keep up. And demand is just much higher than they thought because everyone was stuck at home and they thought, you know what, let's let's renovate. Let's do the place up. So the meme of past a billionaire and it's a guy with a trailer full of timber, it's becoming a reality. This is why I'm scared to throw in any of the timber. I'm, I'm pulling apart my house and I'm just stashing the timber there just, just in case I have to reuse it. You know... The stay-at-home lifestyle has encouraged homeowners to expand or remodel their existing dwellings, while record low mortgage rates exacerbated this home-building spree. On top of that, supply remains quite scarce, with purchasers struggling to fulfill existing and new buying requirements in the aftermath of the pandemic-driven production curbs. There you go. Here's iron ore prices. Look at that, 193 bucks. $193. This is crazy. This is just... Prices of iron ore cargoes were at a 63.5% um, with a 63.5% iron content for delivery into Tianjiang rose to 189 per tonne. It's the highest level since September 2011 on robust demand for steel making ingredients and lower supply. My understanding is that, that um, Brazil's capacity to deliver iron ores, their supply issues are still constrained. So this, this is... This is fantastic news for Australia, everyone. Right now, this here. Okay, this. Steel production is up 15%. We've had we've looked at it before. I did a good news video on it. No one watches the good news. They only want the <laughs> only want the, the scary news. And because if steel's going up, that means coal is going up. And if coal and steel are at higher prices, that means some parts of the mines that may not have been financially viable now could be. That means some mines that maybe they were not going to, their CapEx programs were scaled back. Maybe they're going to start expanding. And it does. For those of you that don't believe it flows through the economy, it does. You look, you're watching someone now who started a business on some Bechtel mines that started up and it went through like three different companies to get to us and we did all the drawings. Okay, so it does flow through. And then, you know, we buy all the stuff we bought back then. What was it? I don't know. Um... Apple iPhones and things, consumer goods. Back when we could still, you know, have smashed our breakfasts, you know, Andrew Bolt would be proud. So the solutions to all of this, everyone. Now, remember, inflation can be caused by an increase in money supply. It can be demand driven and it can be supply driven. Now, all these three things come together. Here in Australia, we're seeing, you know, because an increase in the money supply. You know, we're seeing prices increases increasing in some sectors due to a confluence of these supply issues, increased demand issues, and increased access to home loans. You've got interest, the cash rate is at such a low level, and then I'd argue that manifests in the candle on effect. So we're seeing a change in prices relative in perhaps the housing market to other goods and services because of the flow pass of this money through the economy. And we just saw in the RBA, they're not, well, sorry, the ABS, the RBA isn't worried about house prices, they're worried about jobs, and the ABS are deducting all the grants that you get from the, these, you know, house prices so it doesn't affect it. And just, you know, you've got to realize too, when new built houses go up more, uh, that's going to push up uh, the price for existing stock because people are thinking, well, if they're paying that much for that, I have to at least give it a shot trying to sell higher. So we'll see if we hit the peak in that market. I think it's also exacerbated by the wealth divide and the K-shaped economic recovery here in Australia. We saw how many first home buyers, 60% are getting help from their parents. There's a, there is a divide between people that have access to um, wealth in Australia, intergenerational wealth that can be passed on, and those that don't. Maybe in some ways that's just Australia maturing as a nation. Have you thought about that? So even if you don't trust the ABS data and you're going, Florian, no one ever believes it. Well, that doesn't matter because it's going to be used for the basis of policy decisions and it's going to be used in the media to persuade people, to win arguments and to push, well, to win the battle in elections.
That's that's all that matters. That's what it's for. So you've got to position yourself in a, in such a way to take advantage of it. What do you reckon? We'll see. I mean, these things can all cool down, everyone. Material costs can cool down if supply increases. Shipping costs can return to normal over a given time if once the pressure is alleviated. The, remember, prices and inflation, they're not a bad thing. They're market signals. They're signals that have to ripple through the economy and people should adjust. Maybe if you can't afford to do your house down, maybe you should wait a bit longer till you can. Maybe if someone absolutely has to get it done, they will pay that premium happily. Maybe there's an opportunity. If you, maybe you know, you've been hoarding shipping containers, so now all of a sudden you can flood the market and sell them at a, at a huge profit and then alleviate some of this stress. Or some ships that have been mothballed can now come back online. So that's what we're seeing here. We're seeing messages sent through the market, through the economy, and these are opportunities. That's why you have to see it as well. Someone's going to do well from this. Someone's going to create new jobs. Someone, new opportunities will arise and emerge. So there we have it, guys. Oh, well, I mean, I just, I'm showing the home builder image here just to sh show you how much uh, that's influenced demand in the construction sector there. You know, that's why. And don't forget, we got the bushfires, everyone, too. Remember, remember when that we were talking about that here on the channel? The bushfires were the big news. They were, they were shutting down all the shops. They were having all the economic impacts. And they were affecting timber supply. So there we have it. Thank you all for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one in the comments down below. If you're a fan and enjoy the content I create here, there are a few ways you can support us. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. You can sign up for Self Wealth or Stake, where if you sign up for Self Wealth, we each get five free share trades. Thank you very much. If you sign up for Stake and fund your account, we each get a free share. If you sign up for Independent Reserve, using our referral link, we'll get a, a cut of the commission you have to pay to Independent Reserve. That really helps out as well. You can buy a merch. We have pocket squares for sale. You find the link in the blog below. You know, and our merch. You can use Teespring to buy some Heiser says mugs and those type of things. Gold Pass from the Perth Mint or support us via PayPal. Take care, have a great day, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye for now. Nope, there we go, signing out now.